Welcome back to Why in the Morning. As usual, if it's Tuesday, it's Entrepreneurship Tuesday at Y254 Channel is where you can find us across all our social media handles. At Michelle Ashira is where you can find me across all my social. In this particular session, we dive into an interview that looks at what it takes to launching a fashion brand. Today, I'm joined with uh, none other than Noni Mburu. She's, she's a designer for uh, Muni Design. Karibu sana. Thank you. How are you doing, baby girl? I'm fine. <laughs> <laughs> so, for the, first, for the person, for anyone who is meeting you for the first time, uh, who is Noni and uh, what is her educational background looking like? Um, Noni is Harriet Muthani Mburu. Mm -hmm. I'm a fashion designer. I did fashion in campus and I've been doing fashion out here. I've been studying from YouTube because um, I cut short my, my education in campus. So I've been learning through YouTube and different tutors and fashion designers. Okay, so every iconic brand that I know of when it comes to fashion and design, they always have an origin. So where did the passion for uh, design come from? Because it's one thing to just, you know, like to dress up, <laughs> yeah. style and look good, but it's another to just want to you know, blueprint <laughs> from the scratch. Okay, so <laughs> I think it started when I was younger because I loved to dress up, mm -hmm. but it was mostly projected when I was in high school. In Form 3, I changed schools. Mm -hmm. Then my new school, my home science teacher was very fashionable. She was an old woman, but she would, if she's going monologue, she's just monochroming from head to toe. And I really liked how she dressed. So my love of fashion was projected from there. Mm. I knew I wanted to do fashion from there. All right, nice. Yeah. So what was your first outfit that you came, that you created? Oh, first outfit. Uh -huh. uh, it was a dress, uh -huh. a red dress. Yeah, I made a red dress. Okay, and was it for you, for a friend, a family member? For me. I always, I always started like with dressing myself, uh -huh. so that now I can dress others. How was the reception from from other people seeing what you had created? They loved it. Uh -huh. Yeah, they loved it so much. At the time, I had a tutor, and uh, she couldn't believe I made it myself. It was the first first week in class. She was so happy. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, I f believe like in this the industry of fashion and design it requires lots of like uh, a sweat equity you have to put in a lot of work mm. for someone who's watching this like what does what are the requirements to become like a designer how do you even gain these skills of just drafting printing and then are they the blueprints yeah yes <laughs> okay um as long as you have the passion you don't need to know everything though it's important to know how to sketch to drape to sew to make the outfit yourself but mm -hmm. it's not it's not a must. You can just have someone to make the dress for you or the garment for you and all you have to do is design it. But as for me, I do everything. I sketch, I make the dress, sometimes I even model them. Mm, nice. Yeah. Yeah. And how, where, how do you acquire your fabrics that uh, you work with? I just, I just tarmac and look for them. Mostly in town there's a lot of good fabrics. Mm -hmm. Yeah, in town and in Isli, online most of the time. Yeah. So what is the ultimate goal for Muni Design? Like, what is the plan? To become a global brand, uh -huh. yeah, inclusivity, and obviously to, uh, to provide employment to a lot of people, including mostly the youth, because a lot of youth are, are in the fashion industry. Okay. Yeah. Uh, um, what are, who are your target markets? Because when it comes to fashion and design, I know that the older generation, they're not much into trends yeah. or style. It's mostly the young guys. So what is your, like, your target market? I don't have a specific target market. Mm -hmm. I can say my target market is a stylish person. As long as you're stylish, it doesn't matter the age, color, whatever it is, I'm going to style you or make for you a dress or a, or a suit, anything, as long as you're stylish. That's mm -hmm. my target. Okay. Yeah. Uh, take me through your, when you're initially starting, that is when exactly? In 2020. Okay, so take me through when you're starting off and uh, what are some of the things, like the tools of production that you used? Uh, okay. Did you require any financial uh, uh, capital in your business and how did you go about that? Oh yeah, I did require capital, but I, I only started with a very small amount of capital since I had a machine. 
if I have the machine, I think fabrics I can acquire at very cheap prices. I actually started with redesigning mtumba clothes mm -hmm. and made them a little bit like classy and everything. I just transform it, kabisa. So I started with 260 shillings. Okay. <laughs> I bought mtumbas and then uh -huh. reformed them, then sold them at a higher price. All oh, right. Yeah. I, I went, okay, one of my, my directors, I, I was <laughs> going through her a, a profile. Yeah. Uh, of course, that actually to Pumu up So she went for a photo shoot and I saw like what, the outfit that she, I think there was sweat pad. I, I'm not sure. Yeah. But we'll get to see the, like her work and what she does. It was an amazing uh, outfit and I had to comment and I was like, and then that's how I got to like introduce it to you. So for you, uh, when it comes to just uh, creating something from scratch, what is your mind space at? Do you just sit at a place and you'll be thinking like, hey, by the way, if I, I design this just like this and like that, I would even see someone walking, just, you know, observing and you'll be like, if I, if in that particular outfit, I would have done A, B, C, and D. How is your designing process mentally? Okay, first I get to know the person. Mm -hmm. so I, I try to make it very personal. I try to get to know you, their likes and dislikes, colors and whatever. Also, I try to understand your body type because some patterns and prints and designs don't go with certain body types and there are those that go very well with them. So you have to understand that. To start in fashion school, <laughs> that's why I, I do that. Yeah, okay. yeah so I, I consider. I consider the person's body, what they like, yeah, and what I think they would look good in. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, I, I will, I will concur with that because I believe if you're dressing someone, body type is very important. Yeah, okay. but so, Kunawatu, when uh, they see a particular outfit, they say, I want that. But when you put it on, it doesn't look yeah, like it the doesn't way look you, the same. Yeah. yeah, it doesn't look the same. Mm. Let's look at your brand, uh, the branding aspect of your business, right? How have you positioned yourself like you're different in the marketplace? Because you have different fashion designers who are coming up every single day. Yeah. And I'm sure yeah. as you're watching and you love fashion and design, I'm sure you get into this industry. So there are so many people out there. So how have you positioned yourself to be outstanding and different in the market? Um, I try to grab every opportunity I can. And um, I'm, I try to be loud also. If it's my logo, I'm trying to put it everywhere. If, um, if there's an event somewhere, I'll just approach the organizers and if they let me come in i'm gonna i'm gonna be loud i'm gonna come with my logo there with my my earrings these they are normally like on some papers and they have the logo on i'm gonna make sure there are a lot on the table yani i try to make it like when somebody sees it they'll know it's money it's money yeah so branding merchandise yeah. branding your product yeah all right so speaking about how aggressive you are have you attended or have you been part of any events recently yes i have I have done fashion shows mm -hmm. and um, yeah, I've done fashion shows. Are these fashion shows uh, of any impact? Are they reflecting to sales? Because um, I've interacted with a couple of fashion uh, designers, mm -hmm. uh, for instance, uh, Ashok Sani, and uh, he was like, this, like the runways events, they're, you know, these are not the outfits that yeah, you yeah. see day to day people wearing. wearing. Yeah, true. Yes. So, are they reflecting to sales? Like, if you go to these fashion runways events, be part of them. Are people going to buy your product? Are they are they going to just reflect? Yeah, yeah, they do. Normally, when you showcase at a fashion show, people get to know your brand mm -hmm. and they can see. Um, they can see like you can talk to them about your brand through your clothing so they'll get to understand what type of garments you make and if they like a certain design they'll come and tell you i want this but i want it a little bit altered and everything also fashion shows they um they they let you know like which product will be well received so if one garment is well received you must produce that and the one that doesn't get well received, we just put it on hold. Okay. Yeah. So before we get to look at a uh, couple of your outfits on your page, I'd like to find out what determines your price tag, like in this particular outfit. If it's, a, let's say if it's a track suit or anything of the sort for ladies or even gentlemen, um, what determines this price? If it's a gown, what determines the price of this gown so that people may understand? First, it's the design, mm -hmm. obviously, how much work it took me to make, and and the fabrics. Some fabrics are on the high end. High end, yeah? Yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. So it's the fabric and the design. Mm -hmm. yeah. 
uh, what is your marketing process? My marketing process, I um, I do shoots and post on IG. I also sometimes I try to send people my stuff. I post on my status for people mm -hmm. to see, and now the fashion shows. Mm -hmm. Yeah, couple of challenges that you faced along the way. Um. Okay. So people are not willing to pay the price mm -hmm. <laughs> sometimes, and um, there's a lot of stuff. There's like um, different people want different designs, so sometimes you have to try and um, and incorporate all that. Mm -hmm. And for me, working alone, it's kind of hard mm -hmm. doing all that. Also finding employees is a challenge. Mm -hmm. Finding a good tailor, the one who will reach your standards, mm -hmm. gets a little bit complicated. Sometimes fabric, you want a specific fabric, but you won't find it sometimes, or you find it's very expensive. Uh, some, those are some of the challenges. All right. Yeah. Like uh, looking back from the day you started to where you are right now, would you say that it's something that can sustain you? Is it like a business that you can really sustain you? Yeah, it, it, it can. Though um, right now I don't have so much bills to pay. I'm still in my mother's house. Uh -huh. So I'm waiting to move out so that I can see really... Exhaust this opportunity, yeah. I'm telling you. <laughs> so when I move out, I'll know that. But I know it's, it's an industry that drives. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, the basic needs are food, shelter, and clothing. Mm -hmm. So fashion is there. Okay, mm. and uh, for someone who is watching this and they want to like get into this space of fashion and you know make it a business of its own and stand and you know keep it afloat, what would you what would be your advice now that you you know you have you are miles steps miles away? So what would you what would be your advice for that, towards that person? I would I'd do first welcome them. Mm -hmm. It's a very broad industry. Also, I would tell them to express themselves sometimes um when you're trying to be creative it's hard to express yourself because because someone will like will be like oh no i also don't like that type of clothing but if it's what you like you can just be free also in the industry you have to harden <laughs> you need to harden because some clients don't want to pay for your value sometimes so you mm -hmm. have to just be persistent and mm. passionate, yeah. All right, couple of uh, achievement stories that you've experienced along this journey of yours. Achievements? Yes. Well, I think it's the fashion shows I've done mm -hmm. because um, considering I've been in the industry professionally for an year, I've done five fashion shows at Two Rivers, three mm -hmm. at Two Rivers, one at a university, management. There's one at, is it the current? Yeah, the hub the current. current. Yeah. Yeah. So um, at Two Rivers, I did an international runway. I think that's the best achievement I have had so far. Okay. But there are more coming achievements. So I'm just my naming the mild ones. There are bigger ones coming. Uh -huh. Yeah, but at Two Rivers, I did an international runway. Also did a solo fashion show. That's a big achievement. Mm -hmm. um, and also at the hub, it was an amazing opportunity because I worked with big names. Yeah, I work with big names like Sapatu Fashion mm -hmm. and Fintan Fashion. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I like the fact that you're very confident, and there's no like <laughs> a way. There's no other way. It's this way, yeah. which is greatness that is coming. You're, mm -hmm. you're like, sh you know, more are coming, and you're yeah. very sure about that. So, how are you positioning yourself when it comes to that platform, where the, whereby you'll be working with uh, bigger brands who are more exposed? Yeah. Um, you're just networking. I'm trying to network a lot, and every opportunity I see, I grab. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's that's what I'm doing because I must push myself and. The fact that I'm focused on one path is mm -hmm. kind of helping me to push myself forward. All right, let's check out a couple of your uh, the outfits that you've worked on. Okay. Uh, I believe it, they're gonna we're going to look at your Instagram. Okay. Yes. All right. So let's do this. All right, check us out this outfit. Oh, this is Africulture event at the Hub Current. So all that is African fabric and African designs, mm -hmm. but made in a, in a, it's contemporary, like just made in a modern way, like Nikitenge, mm -hmm. but you can see it's a, it's a sweat pant from oh. Kitenge, mm -hmm. a jacket, a dress jacket, like that's a dress jacket, a is Kitenge that, one. Oh, and this is, is it Ankara? Yeah, what it's is? Ankara. Oh, right. Yeah. 
and a kiondo. Oh, nice. <laughs> I like the, I love, my favorite color is green. Oh, so nice. that dress really is beautiful. Thank okay. You. So how long does it take to come up with such a, uh, such a dress? That was really, really hard to make, actually. Mm -hmm. It took me like almost a week. <laughs> a whole week? Yeah. Wow. But, but it's because like sometimes when I'm doing something, mm -hmm. I am, if I feel like my creative energies have exhausted, I'm going to pause, mm -hmm. go to the next one, and then I'll come I'll back come and back, yeah? my, en my energies are back. Speaking about being a creative, <laughs> okay. I took us this through this. Oh, so this is a uh, Ankara suit. Mm -hmm. It's a short, but sometimes when you wear shorts in Kenya, some people may feel like you're not appropriately dressed. Mm -hmm. So I I put a lace fabric from where the short where the short meets the lace fabric. Mm -hmm. Yani, if you wear it as a short, it mm -hmm. will show too much skin. Okay. But then when you put lace on it, mm -hmm. people feel like you're not showing too much skin, but you're showing just that it's. It's not so clear. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah. So that that was the idea of it. You can wear shorts freely. Well, 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 on the runway, darling. <laughs> yeah. So take us through this outfit. Ah, uh, this one was inspired by Yemi Alade. Ah. Yeah. She, I, I saw a post of her with such an outfit, but it was a blue one, mm -hmm. but I altered it kidogo. So for you, yeah. uh, the trends of creative or coming up with different design, it's inspired from everywhere. Yeah, from everywhere. Okay. Everyone fashionable, actually. Oh, what? Uh, what? So that's an agbada. Mm -hmm. It's a traditional African outfit, mostly for males. Um, the people who wear this are normally seen as they're respected. Yeah, it's <laughs> they're more cultural. Is, it's cultural, yeah. Okay. They're respected. They have a, a very high place in the community. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it, it, it's a three piece. It has the shirt, mm -hmm. which is ankle length, and there's a trouser and the hat. Nice one. Yeah, nice and a whisk. <laughs> Fancy. There it is. Ladies and gentlemen, my director, she's looking fabulous. Yeah. So, <laughs> so this is the outfit that I saw. Yeah. <laughs> this is the outfit that I saw. Take me through this one. <laughs> this outfit actually has opened very many doors for me. <laughs> I don't know if it's the model. Or the it is the model. Look at yeah, her. Definitely. <laughs> yeah. So this is a sweat Ankara. Uh -huh. It's sweat, sweat fabric inside uh -huh. and Ankara on top. Ah, yeah. and you can get it from different sizes? Yeah, different sizes, different colors. Nice, yeah. it looks really beautiful. Thank you. And that was the outfit that I saw, guys, and I was like, hmm, tell us how you got that outfit, <laughs> my director, who was your designer, and that's how I met you. Really. Uh, thank you. So you're doing fabulous, mm. fabulous job out here. So this is the gown? Oh, uh, yeah, this is uh, this is a dress, dress I yes. made for a wedding. Mm -hmm. I was attending a friend's wedding, so I made it the night before the wedding. Wow. I had too much work. I had too much workload. I didn't have time to make a garment for myself. Mm -hmm. So overnight, I said, let me just make a dress, and I did a quick fix. That yeah. is a fabulous dress yeah. for just a night, like a night before. Yeah. So oh, for nice. this picture, I have mm -hmm. accessorized the bride, mm -hmm. the necklace, and the earrings, and also the bridesmaid. Fabulous. Yeah. And then we have Mooney. Yeah. Mooney Design. Yeah. She's in studio with us. So guys, make sure you stay tuned. We have so much coming your way. So, mm -hmm. hey, <laughs> I am out of, I, I don't know what to say, because you are really doing great, for, especially in terms of how long you've been into the industry. I know, you, of course, you went to school and studied this, of putting the work and everything, but just uh, seeing your pieces of work, it's, it's really tremendous. Thank you. You're doing great, girl. So uh, financial lessons that you've learned along the way, because uh, at the end of the day, it's something that you love and uh, it, you need to make money out of it. Yeah. There's a business aspect of it. So what are a couple of financial lessons that you've learned along the way? Um, uh, budgeting, you need to budget well. Um, also, you need to save, I at least try to save a little percent so that I can invest later. Those saving is not, I can't advise people to save like most of the time. Reinvesting is what I can advise people. Because mm. reinvesting is what has helped me to 
to do everything that I'm doing because I, I, I don't borrow money from my mom to buy fabrics or whatever. I just reinvest and make my little amount grow. You see, I started from 260. Yes, <laughs> yeah. no, no, 260. Mm. And so far, uh, the fact that you also uh, you know, planned your own e event yeah. and uh, you made things happen. Mm. So, yes, reinvesting back to your business. The other question of the day, and we are asking you, what is the craziest customer experience you have had on our, on our Facebook, on all of your social our social media handles, that is at Y254 channel, at Michelle Ashira, Rama Guko. What is your craziest <laughs> what? Okay. customer experience you've ever had? Um, okay, my craziest customer experience is very crazy because I still have the outfits. They didn't come for it. Uh -huh. Okay, so I did. I did fitting so well. I went. We talked. I did everything. But when it came to the price, the customer was like, "No, you know I'm a celebrity. I'm gonna market you. Wow. Do me at half price. You know, I'm gonna, gonna give you a free platform." Yeah, and I was like, "You know, <laughs> I'm not here for exposure." Really. Oh yeah, because yeah. you put in the work. How many outfits mm -hmm. were they? It was, it was, a, it, there were two, mm -hmm. it was um, an African outfit, it was a shirt and a trouser. So wow. the person wanted to give me exposure. Marketing. Yeah. Uh, like, had they paid prior, like, a deposit they because of this fabric aspect of it? They had not. Actually, I learned a lot. From, from that experience? Yeah, yeah. Oh, but they tell us what you learned through that experience as uh, we wind up. Uh, first, you have to... <laughs> to ask for deposit mm -hmm. because the deposit will cater for the fabrics when you've already bought the fabrics with the customers with the customers um deposit mm -hmm. it won't be a loss on you even if they don't pay for the for the rest mm -hmm. and you remain with the garments at least it's just time and labor but don't use your money to make somebody's garment unless it's unless you're making ready to wear garments mm -hmm. yeah first ask for deposit yeah so that's the lesson mm -hmm. at least we learn something they say we don't uh, what's the word we don't fade we learn through it yeah. so yeah, you learn something yeah i learned a lot very impactful so can, how can people reach out to you if they want to work with you uh they love the design that they have seen and they would like to purchase from you um you can get me at money designs underscore co everywhere Instagram, Facebook, and on LinkedIn, and you can also message me. My number is on Instagram and on Facebook, and you can also reach me at email at noniG254. All right, thank you very much, Noni, for taking the time to be with us. Thank you for having me. Looking forward to, you know, rock one of your outfits. Please. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so, Karib, uh, Santi Sanok for coming through. We're looking forward to just uh, having this conversation again. Okay, thank you. All right, that is Noni Mburu, a designer uh, in Muni Design. Make sure you follow up across all our social media handles and get more information if you want to get into this industry, if you want to purchase any of our uh, uh, outfits. There you go, you have it. We were talking about launching, what it takes to launch a fashion brand. And uh, I hope you've learned a couple of things and fell in love with a couple of the outfits like I did. So make sure you keep the conversation going at Y254 channel at me, 